Hi guys, my name is Courtney Newman and I'm another assistant coach here for the UW Bull Judging team. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the questions and reasons portion of the Bull Judging contest. So the portion of the contest that it represents on the 4-H and FFA side, typically there are six questions, at least this is in the state of Wyoming, um, that's worth 50 points a piece and it's all, on all six classes. So you have three brief classes and three commercial classes. Um, and that's worth a total of 300 points. And then the reasons portion of it is becoming new to the Wyoming 4-H side of things, but um, the University of Wyoming hosts a 7220 contest right before the National Western Stock Show. And we've incorporated, incorporated reasons into that portion of the contest there. Uh, we feel it's very important to the development of the youth, but also um, to prepare them to be collegiate judges and successful and such. So. Um, there's three sets required for seniors at that contest, and we make it optional for juniors and intermediates. Um, on the college set side, like I said, there's no questions at all, um, and there's three sets of reasons. So that's why we value it so much on the 4-H and FFA side. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the taking notes portions of things. Um, that's super important and critical to doing the to making sure you're successful at both reasons and questions. Um, so. Steno pads are typically what you see in the livestock judging realm. Um, we use it on the wool side too. It's a really good way to keep your stuff in a small book. It's spiral bound, um, really good way for the kids to document everything. Um, so we recommend those, but notebook papers works really well. Pencils, um, also a good thing in case things get changed or you need to um, switch stuff around. And then a clipboard is really important. I know Dylan um, touched on that in a when he was talking about the rail in an earlier video, but rubber bands on those so you can keep track of um, locks. And that's a really easy way, especially if you're using uh, loose leaf paper. So we're going to start with the reasons portion. That's kind of the more encompassing side of uh, things. And then I'll move into questions. So I'm going to show you the format on how to take notes um, and the way we do it. There's many, many different ways to take notes. You guys may have seen different ways or used different ways. Uh, but this is the way we teach our students here at the university. Um, so up at the top of the page, we want to address the class name and placing um, as well to write down your cuts as that kind of shows you your logic of the classes uh, and what to do with different things there. And then up at the top, you see one through four, and that's where we're going to put in the IDs. Um, so that's all things that kind of make the fleeces unique. Um, everything from paint brands, which one has the most vegetable matter, um, off cover colored fleeces, good character, bad character, uh, long staple, short stapled, lamb tip fleeces um, are always good to know. Small outlined, large outlined, um, breaks and breed classes, uh, frowsiness. So anything that makes that fleece unique right up there uh, next to its number. And then we use the nine box format. So I'll go ahead and go through there. You split your paper in half and then on the right side, you split um, that column into two different rows, um, so six rows total. And so we'll just say that this class is placed one, two, three, four. And so up at the top, the discussion one over two. So that top column is your top pair or that top row is your top pair. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see the discussion one over two and then two over one, um, that's the grant, a Y2 does something better than one. So that's where you grant back to that fleece. Um, and then you talk about the criticism of two or why it doesn't win, so why it goes second. Um, and then we'll move into the middle pair. So that's discussion of two over three. Um, and then a grant of three over two. So what three does better than two or what three does better by itself in some cases. And then we'll talk about why three goes um, third there. And so the criticism, what it doesn't do good. And then We'll move into the bottom pair. So that's discussion of three over four in this case. Um, and then you'll have the grant of four over three. And then you will talk about why four goes fourth. Um, and then, so the flow, when we're looking at uh, starting to talk a set, you'll start in your top pair and you'll talk about the discussion, discussion of one over two, and then you'll move to the grant of two over one, and then down to your criticism of two. And then you'll move into your middle pair of your discussion of two over three, and then a grant of three over two, and then your criticism of three. And then lastly, you'll move into your bottom pair and discussion of three over four, and then your grant of four over three, and then criticism of four. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a set of reasons here that uh, brings in all those components of the nine box format that I was talking about. So keep in mind that this is a collegiate set. So it's a little bit more in depth. It's a little bit more detailed, but it's still a good baseline to see all, how all those components come together into a set of reasons. So um, this is a quarter blood commercial class. Uh, the official, I have a typo in there, is actually 3241 um, with cuts of 3, 3, and 5. So I like the quarter blood breed class, uh, 3241. It's really important to have that be the opening sentence. Um, for the reasons taker, they need to know what class you're talking, but also your class placing. Um, so always make sure you guys start with that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and get into that top pair discussion. So in this case, it's three over two. Um, so when I turned around to the class, I found a large outline, good character fleece that just had to start. Um, so that tells us that that fleece started rather easily. Um, it was really big outlined. It was good character. So we can start to picture that fleece in our mind. Um, and then we go on to say the bright white fleece is the finest on the table and brings the most economic value to the producer is it will scour card and comb the most pounds of clean wool. Um, I know Amy talked about earlier how weight super important is that's what the industry is paid upon. Um, so that tells us that we understand that as a reason. It tells the reasons taker um, that you as a student understand that. Uh, not super important, but it also tells us that it's the bright white fleece. Um, it's the finest one on the table. So you paid attention to that. So it kind of brings a lot of things together. And then the next component that we talked about is uh, your grant. And so that's going to be the grant of two over three. So we're going to say why, what two does better. So understandably, the two fleece is the other bulky heavy weight fleece. Um, so we know that it's the other heavy weight one on the table. It's a big outlined one. That's another word for bulky. Um, and then we need to say, but why it goes second. So why the two fleece go second. But it also is the bad charactered fleece that's too frowsy about its appearance. So I left it second. Tells the reason Staker was really frowsy, was bad character. Those two go hand in hand as you learned from Amy's presentation as well. So then we'll go ahead and move into the middle discussion. Um, the same format kind of applies. We're going to talk about why two beats four and then why what four does better than two. And then we're going to talk about why four does go third. Um, so but in a middle decision, this is a good transition to tell the reasons taker that you're moving to your middle decision. I just find that the two fleece is the heavier weight fleece that will in turn bring the most value at the mill. So we're saying that that fleece is heavier weight. Um, it'll bring more money back to the producer at the mill um, in this pair. And then we'll say why the four fleece does something better than three. Um, so now the four fleece is still a tight crimped fleece, um, but the pencil locked one just gives up too many pounds and needs to be left third. So that was kind of both in there. So that gave you your grant of that it's still really tight crimped, um, but it's pencil locked. It gives up too many pounds and that's why um, I left it third. And then we're going to move into the final decision, same format there. Um, and so you can either say your bottom pair or final decision. Um, so the transition here is, but it's quite simple for me in my final decision. And I just stick to plain economics. That's just saying that it's heavier weight, right? More money on the table. So the pencil lock fleece will scour card and comb more pounds of clean wool at the mill. Kind of reiterating what we said earlier, but it's good to say that you understand that. That's still why this placing, why it's placed this way. It's a commercial class. We know that's mostly placed on weight. And then we'll say what, what one does better than four. So now one is still a long stapled fleece. Okay, so it's still really long stapled, but beyond that, we now we need to criticize it. But in an industry paid on weight, the smallest outline, lightest weight fleece on the table has to go forth. So now we made the reasons taker understand that we know it's lightest weight. We know the industry's paid on weight. Um, and it's the smallest outlined one. So that why, that's why it needs to be left forth. It's also important to say thank you at the end um, of your reason set. It's just thanking the reason taker for their time. It's just something that's kind of respectful. It's just common courtesy um, of why we say that. So now I kind of have an example class that we'll go ahead and talk through. Um, you guys can either pull out a sheet of paper and start looking at some of these fleeces. Um, go ahead and pause the video as you want to look at each one on the next four slides. Um, I have some more details about the fleeces um, in terms of weight, but also some pictures of the staple length up close. These were, um, this is a Cordale class out of our 7220 um, contest that we had 
this last January in replace of the Denver wool contest. Um, so go ahead and start taking some notes on that and pause um, the video as you're doing that. And then I'll go through and talk through the notes there and then give you an example set of it. So hopefully you guys were able to fill out the nine boxes there um, and kind of take some time getting used to that format and looking how it um, goes. And so I'll go, he go ahead and walk you through what I saw um, there and how I filled in these boxes. Of course, there's some things that um, you guys couldn't see or didn't see because I saw this class in person and you guys obviously didn't. So keep that in mind as I'm going through here. So it's the Cordial Breed class. The official on it was one, two, three, four with cuts of four, two, and six. Um, so I'll start in the ID portion up there at the top. So the one fleece was the big outlined high yielding fleece. Uh, two was blue paint branded. Paint brands are crucial that you guys write that down and get those. Um, those are free points. Uh, three was inconsistent and small outlined and four was the dirty low yielding inconsistent fleece. Uh, so then we'll start on the first of the nine boxes, one over two, um, discussion over that them. So one was the heavier weight fleece, um, really good in terms of Cordial breed indicative crimp. Uh, it was long stapled and really consistent. So those are the big things that we wanted to point out and we need to make sure to say in that set of reasons. Um, and then looking over two over one, what does two do better than one or what does two do well by itself, depending on the scenario and how easy of a decision it was, it may be what does two do better than one or it may be what does two do good by itself, keep that in mind. So two's the other big outlined fleece. Um, it has a very Cordale like crimp uh, that's worth mentioning. Remember this is a breed class. So we want those highly heritable traits. That's super important and a big placing factor. Um, and then we're gonna say why two, what two does bad. So we know it's the blue paint branded fleece. We have that up in the ID section. Um, it's lighter weight and it's kind of dirty and frowsy. You could see the dirt penetration in that, um, in its own slide there. And you could see how much dirt was in there. So then we're gonna move into the middle pair of two over three. I was cut two points, so we know it's close. Um, so we wanna have a little bit more discussion there and you guys will see that in the set. Um, so two had really good breed character, Cordial like crimp, was longer stapled, um, still pretty big outlined fleece, but in terms of weight, it was similar to three. And then in this case, since it's so close and we maybe even thought about switching the pair, we want to make sure to talk, what does three do better than two? Um, so we know that three is higher yielding. You can see that in the staple. You can see that it's brighter and wider and there's less dirt penetration there. Um, there's also less vegetable matter. So it might have more pounds of clean wool, which is really worth mentioning. Um, but in a breed class, if it's that similar on weight, you can make the decision on breed character is what happened here. So what does three do bad? Why did I put it third? Um, so I said it was really variable in its fiber bundle and you can see that in that picture. Um, some are really big, some are really small, some look pencil blocked. Um, and that could be from various parts of the um, sheep, but we want it to be really um, consistent throughout. We also saw that there's a fair amount of vegetable matter, which doesn't have a huge impact on yield, and we're not really worried about it, so it might be more of an ID, um, but still something worth mentioning. And then it's also the frowsier fleece um, that's not as good in its crimps, so in terms of highly heritable tra traits, it's not as strong as two, and that's why we left it third. And then for the final decision of three over four, we know that it's a huge weight advantage and that's why it's cut six on bottom. There's just more pounds of product, but four is still a good Cordell fleece. Then it's high yielding and has a more breed indicative crimp than does three. And so we need to really make sure that's worth mentioning and that we just don't hammer on that fleece and throw it away because there still is a lot of value to it. And the other thing worth noting is sometimes you will talk to the producer that brought the fleeces. Um, so you never want to just say and list all the bad things about the fleece. There's always usually a little bit of some redeeming value in some of those that you want to um, bring to their attention. 
So, and then why does four go last? Well, it doesn't meet staple and it's the lightest weight place as well as it's the finest one on the table, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for the Cordale breed. Um, some of those places are moving a little bit finer into the quarters and not so much the low quarters, but it is worth mentioning that it is the light or the finest place on the table of the four. So then when we um, look the like I mentioned, the longest discussion needs to be in the middle is that's the two point cut. Um, the shortest discussion needs to be in the bottom pair is that's a six point cut. So you just don't want to spend as much time because it was an easy decision. So then we'll move into a set of reasons um, that I had typed up that was relay, um, for this class. So I'll go ahead and read through it um, and kind of give you my thoughts as we go through there. Uh, so I like the cordial breed class, one, two, three, four. Important to mention that what the class is and the placing. So the big outline fleece on the far left of the table will add a lot of value to all segments of the industry and inject the highly heritable trait sought after by the progressive Cordale breeder. So we mentioned that um, it's a big outline fleece where it's sitting on the table. It has the highly heritable traits. Um, and we know that a progressive Cordale breeder will really appreciate that fleece because it's super breed indicative. Then we go into say the long stapled fleece that's extremely uniform and it's crimp is undoubtedly the highest yielding that will scour carton comb with the most pounds of clean wool. So we understand the scour carton comb process. Um, it'll have the most pounds of clean wool because it's really high yielding and it's really uniform and it's crimp. So now we're gonna talk about what two does better. So we know it's the blue paint branded fleece. Uh, so sure, the blue paint branded fleece is the other big outlined one on the table, but as I went in for close inspection, it became clear that the lighter weight fleece needs to stay in the middle pair. So that was mainly that decision was weight. And so we kept it short there and said that we're going to move into a middle discussion. So as we move into the middle pair, uh, we say, so I'll transition into a middle pair of fleeces where I think there's more discussion, but I'll tie into the fleece that's more indicative of the Cordale breed. We talked about that, how that was the big decision factor that that has the more highly heritable traits that two does over three. So the two, and then we're going to describe why. The two fleece is more defined in its crimp from base to tip and it's finer in micron diameter. I just think this one will be more profitable in terms of passing the highly heritable traits onto its offspring. So that's a big placing factor for breed classes, as you know from what Amy talked about, so important to put in there. And then we're going to say what three does better. So certainly three comes with similar pounds off the table. And quite honestly, that's the higher yielding one of the pair. So we're understanding that it's similar in weight, it's high yielding still. But unfortunately, it's the small outlined fleece that needs to be more uniform in its fiber bundle. And the frowsiest fleece just needs to be better in its character. We talked about those things in the discussion earlier. It's frowsy and it's variable in fiber uh, bundle. And then the bottom pair, but despite this being a breed class, it's still an industry where pounds pay. Not saying we know it's a breed class, but still at the end of the day, that's what producers get paid on. And simply three will be more profitable for the producer. But there's still some quality in four. Is the high yielding place is still uniform in its crimp design from base to, base to tip? However, the inconsistent fleece doesn't meet staple and the lightest weight fleece logically fits forth. So we're just saying it's really short. You can see how short that paragraph is, six point cut. So it doesn't meet staple, it's lightweight. It just needs to stay forth. And then we'll say thank you at the end of giving that a sec. So I'm gonna now I'm going to move into questions. Um, I stuck with the reasons portion first is that highlights a lot of the components that we use in questions. Those two work together. Um, and that's why we use questions in the juniors and intermediates because it prepares them for uh, reasons when they're seniors because they need to be taking notes and looking at all those different things and making decisions and um, calling things as they are as we go through there. So this is a question sheet that we use in the state of Wyoming. Um, all six classes that we have um, has this question sheet. And so we'll look at those all 25 questions there. Um, and so there are things like longest staple, shortest staple, uh, heaviest, lightest, yield questions, some fiber strength questions. So I'll go ahead and go through there. So I went ahead and pulled those four fleeces that we had done that reasons exercise on uh, to answer some of these questions that I can talk through for you guys. Um, and so you already have notes on them and they're super familiar to you. So we'll go through this kind of quickly. Um, a lot of these questions are really objective questions. There's a couple in here that are subjective, but we'll talk about those. Uh, so longest stapled, I mentioned that in the reason set, that's one. Shortest stapled, I mentioned that as well, that's four. 
Um, the fleece that's the most uniform in Staple Link is also one. We said that was a really uniform fleece. Uh, finest in class four, I mentioned that in a set of reasons, uh, coarsest is two. You can kind of see that typically when they're a little bit frowsier like that, um, they can be typically towards the coarser end. It's an indicator, but still something you want to check. Um, most uniform fleece and grade. So that's saying in fiber diameter. So we know, and Dylan mentioned this, that, um, the bridge can be vary a little bit from the shoulder that can vary a little bit from the side of the animal and so that we can see a little bit of variability in fiber diameter throughout, but we want that to be super uniform all the way through. So sometimes when you pull locks from fleeces, you can tell that one might be like a 54s and another part might be a 48. In a perfect world, everything on that fleece is a 48, but that's not always the case. So it's something to take note of. Um, and so in this case, that's number one is um, the most uniform all the way throughout. You can kind of tell that on the fleece. I know it was hard for you guys to see, but um, that was a question that we answered for that class. Um, the heaviest, I gave you weight. So the heaviest fleece was one, the lightest was four. Uh, most pounds of clean wool, we didn't have any yield shifts because that was in the middle pair where we would have made a yield shift. So we know that one's the heaviest, four is the lightest. Um, in terms of yield, one is the highest yielding. You can tell that that's the brightest white fleece. Typically longer stapled fleeces are high, higher yielding. That's another indicator. Um, the lowest yielding is number two. You can see that dirt penetration. You can see that it's kind of the dirtiest fleece, especially when you compare all those pictures. Um, the most charactered fleece, the best charactered fleece or the one with the most character is, or character is number one. Um, Fleece with the most vegetable matter is three. I kind of talked about that. That's kind of that hay um, in there. Fleece with the most stained wool and the fleece with the least fiber strength. This is where we get a little bit more subjective. So in this class, we didn't have any fleeces with like a ton of stained wool. So I wouldn't have said any. Um, and then fleeces with the least fiber strength, everything was really sound in terms of fiber strength. So again, I wouldn't have said any. So these are some is um, you guys are putting together different question sheets or as you look at your state question sheet is something to make note of um, that these questions are some that maybe can be looked at taken out being taken out or do we answer none or zero um, and kind of how to handle that. So that's 50 points total for every question you miss you it's minus two points. Um, and so there's 25 questions there like I mentioned. Okay, so then just a little bit about attire and presentation when giving reasons. Um, I have a picture of here of our Houston team in 2019 of a contest with reasons. So that was a really professional contest. We're all in business casual. Um, so the girls are wearing blazers and slacks. Um, it's important that you wear nice boots. Um, and then the guys are wearing ties um, and button ups and then a suit coat and slacks as well with nice boots. Um, this is something that you guys, that each state can kind of depend their attire on, um, but definitely on the collegiate level when we're giving sets, this is the um, kind of required or set attire. Um, this is also attire for contests without reasons, but also depending on your state, maybe with reasons, if it's a little bit more casual, um, where you just wear like a nice blouse, um, some starch jeans and some nice boots. It's really important that you look professional. Uh, some things to note is that you don't want to wear anything with your county or state name on it, especially when you're giving reasons. And I think even on the um, contest without reasons and just questions, if we leave that out of it, um, that's a really good idea. Also not using anything identifying like lanyards that say where you're from or your county. Um, so just kind of keeping everything simple and just people not know, really knowing where you are. Um, and so it's just important that people look nice and presentable, um, especially when giving reasons. So that's all I have for the reasons and questions portion. Uh, feel free to reach out to Dr. Stewart um, with any other questions that we can answer. Uh, I know reasons is a little challenging for everybody and especially those young kiddos just getting started, but it's a super important component, especially when you get to the collegiate side is what we're wanting and what we're trying to prepare the younger youth for. Um, so feel free to reach out with us to us with any questions. Thank you.